Everybody's heard of M.2 SSDs, these little tiny doodads that manage to be many times smaller and many times faster than traditional computer hard drives or even regular SATA SSDs. But there is understandably a ton of confusion that exists around how to choose one and install it in your existing system. So let's figure that out, shall we? If you haven't seen Nerd Sports yet, check it out. All the episodes are available now for free over at youtube.com slash channel superfun. Before we get started though, we need to differentiate between physical standards and protocol standards. This right here is a mini display port cable, and this right here is a Thunderbolt cable, but they look the same. This USB type C port is running at USB 2.0 speeds. This one is USB 3, which can be 10 or even 20 times the speed. And this one is Thunderbolt 3, which is faster still and comes with a host of other capabilities. So backing up then, because most cables are just a physical electrically conductive wire connecting point A to point B. Nothing would prevent a you know, piece of coat hanger from connecting between a receiver and a home theater speaker. Or let's say an ethernet cable from being used to carry an HDMI digital video signal. In fact, that product exists. Okay, but back to computer drives again. M.2 is one of several physical connector standards that allows an SSD to be attached internally to your computer. This motherboard right here conveniently gives us a great example of all of them. So what you're looking at right now is SATA or Serial ATA. This connector suffers from more latency because of its indirect connection to the CPU. Right here is the basically dead SATA Express standard that uses two PCIe lanes, which are better because they're connected more directly to the CPU, but has a very bulky connector and no drive support to speak of. This one right here is U.2, which uses four PCIe lanes, twice as many as SATA Express, but has all but disappeared outside the enterprise space. And finally, this one right here is M.2, which has basically won out versus the other next-gen connectors at this point. Thanks to its performance, it also uses a maximum of four PCIe lanes, as well as its compact form factor that allows it to be used not just for desktops, but also for ultra-thin notebooks. But, and getting back to the whole lesson on protocol versus physical standards, most of these physical connections support multiple protocols. That is to say more than one way for the computer to communicate with the drive's controller over the physical wires. And if you aren't using an NVMe protocol drive in your M.2 slot, you might not be getting the full experience. So if your computer has a PCIe M.2 slot, and you can see the difference here between an NVMe capable one and an AHCI only one here, they're usually labeled, then it's simple. You just plug it in, maybe configure a couple settings in the BIOS and poof, it's off to the races. But then what if you don't have a PCI Express M.2 slot on your motherboard? Okay, well step one, make sure you don't have one. Some motherboards even hide this connector on the back, and it's small enough that it can be pretty easy to miss. Then, step two, ensure that your motherboard actually supports booting to an NVMe drive. In general, anything Z97 or X99 chipset and newer will have that support, and if it does, and you still want to use a drive, then you want to pick up one of these little guys. 
These cards plug into a PCIe slot on your motherboard, just like a video card, sound card, etc. Consult your motherboard's manual to find out how many lanes each slot has and what speeds they operate at. More is better. And I've got a couple different versions here. Silverstone has an NVMe only one and one that supports both an NVMe and AHCI, remember that's the same protocol as SATA over a slightly different M.2 connector, that are reasonably priced. Then there are more premium options like the Wings from Angelbird that looks a little cooler and includes a thermal shield and pad to keep the drive from overheating. We're going to use this SP500 Fizen controller based NVMe SSD from Corsair for our demo here. Once everything is hooked up, you can move the mounting screw around depending on the length of your NVMe drive. And then you just need to make sure you're running the latest UEFI BIOS on your board and go through the same steps as our previous board that supported it natively. Going back further than the last couple generations of boards, things get a little dicey. Theoretically, all the way back to P67 days, you can install an NVMe SSD in one of these PCI Express cards just like this. But you won't get the full benefit unless it's a newer one because you won't actually be able to boot from the drive. And right now, NVMe drives are a little bit too expensive for most people to want to use them as a Steam library. And there is yet another wrench to throw in the spokes of this whole ordeal. While the connector on the motherboard may be capable of both NVMe and AHCI operation, I'm not aware of any NVMe M.2 drives that will work across either protocol. So if you have an NVMe board, you want to get an NVMe drive, or maybe you could run an AHCI one, and if you have an AHCI only M.2 slot, then you will need an AHCI, so more protocol overhead, SSD, just like this one, and don't expect to get earth shattering performance out of it. We are working with Rockat! Look at that, it's like a spin move or whatever. To give away their cross headsets designed for multi-platform, multi-use, multi-purpose use on multi-platforms. Some of its features include large 50 millimeter neodymium magnet drivers. It comes with dual microphones? One designated for PC and one designated for mobile. The mics are detachable and plug into a port on the underside of the left ear cup. And they've got quick access volume controls, memory foam, ear pads, a light 185 gram profile. And to enter, all you need to do is watch this video and enter through the link in the video description. The giveaway will run for seven days from today. Seven days, so move fast. So I hope that clears things up and you guys have a better understanding of M.2 now. I sure do, because I had to do all this research to make this video. So thanks for watching, guys. If you just like this video, hit that dislike button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider checking out where to buy the drives or accessories we featured at Amazon at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store where you can buy cool shirts like this one. Woo! like that or our community forum which you should totally join now that you're done doing all those things you're probably wondering what to watch next so check out our latest video right there over on channel super fun i think it's like rc car bowling or some nonsense like that pretty fun <laughs>